The federal government has pledged to use some of 6.2 trillion naira in additional budgetary expenditure to stimulate the economy through infrastructure projects in the 2024 fiscal year. The proposed budget includes projects like Lagos Calabar, our 1,000km road project, Secretary Bagdagri Road, our project, and the rail project, which received 85% funding from China. The budget also aims to provide counterpart funding for rail projects that have stopped in the last year, including the Port Harcourt Main Bridge, Bagdagri Tinkan Port, Lekki Port, Lagos Ibadan Standard Gorge, and Kando Marada our standard gauge. The 3.2 trillion R renewed OPA infrastructure fund will also provide equity or counterpart contributions for priority and critical projects. The Nigerian Senate has formally established an other committee to investigate alleged economic sabotage in the petroleum sector. The committee, chaired by Senate President Kaksula Albert Akmavio, who has tasked with addressing the long standing issues of pipeline vandalism and other nefarious activities that have eroded the nation's economy. Akmavio emphasized that any threat to the sector is a direct threat to the country's economic survival and that no government in power would tolerate compromise in the integrity of the petroleum industry. The committee is expected to now collaborate with relevant agencies, industry experts and stakeholders to uncover the root causes of these sabotage activities and identify the perpetrators, their methods and networks. Now moving on, Honorable Ahmed Munir, uh, Chairman of the House Committee on Commerce, has now called for an understanding that between the Nigerian Maritime Administration and the Safety Agency and the Nigeria Exports Promotion Council over the unpaid 10% freight levies since 1979, which the master claims does not exist in the original Act. We at the Parliament are not witch hunters. If anything, we are saint hunters. Confusion and record distract government's activities. Both NMASA and NEPC are government agencies under whose responsibilities it is to ensure that their mandates touch lives. The essence of this gathering is for us all to find the truth and also a lasting solution to this lingering issue. A few days ago, the committee had a public hearing where some bills were looked into by Nigerians to either strengthen the existing laws or enact a new one. We would like you also, in the course of this, to lay bare what the challenges are so that the gray areas can be strengthened. Both parties presented their claims, citing the act uh, that established them. The NEPC's executive director relies on the National Assembly's act to fund the council, while Nemasa's representative argues Nemasa is relying on the act in lack of explicit provisions. Over these years, my predecessors have made several efforts, written to Minister of Finance, written to everyone that cares to hear, so that we'll get this fund, but nothing still happened. And when I resumed, we wrote to Minister of Finance and my Honorable Minister, my, I need to apologize to this house, there's another meeting on Agua that she's holding. I'm sorry, uh, we should have, sent, should have sent somebody, but that's why she, she also wrote to uh, ensure that we get this funds. But yet, nothing has happened. Mr. Chairman, as Nigerian Airports, based on the limited funds that we have, we have done a lot but it is quite small compared to what we can do as a nation. The master was created with a different set of objectives altogether. And, you know, with clear provisions on how and where to apply its revenue. The officials of NEMASA today were not the officials of NMA, were not the officials of NEMASA yesterday, and will not be the officials of NEMASA tomorrow. So what is consistent, the consistent thread that binds everybody, including members of the National Assembly, is the full application of the law. And suggesting that we engage NEPC on what or how much to pay to NEPC suggests that NEMASA is in possession of surplus funds it doesn't exist, Mr. Chairman. And even in the, 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 the reference to the 50% uh, 
revenue uh, accruable to the federal government, it was the House that passed the Finance Act and amended it. And that 50% revenue from NEMASA is taken up front, leaving NEMASA with the balance to take care of recurrent expenditure and whatever is left for capital. So this is actually secondary. It will be possible for us to consider it if it exists in our law. Honorable Julius Yonbere, you are presenting the House uh, Majority Leader holds the cooperation with the Committee on Synergy among government agencies to achieve economic prosperity for the people. This event, however, reminds us of the importance of interagency synergy, collaboration and partnership in the running of government activities. There is need for agencies of government to work together to promote economic development. After all, it is one government and one purpose to build a nation and provide good governance. To avert conflicts of this nature, MDS must demonstrate high level of accountability, transparency, and openness in their duties and communicate more favorably and effectively among themselves in line with their regulations and laws guiding their activities. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.